laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that. Praising you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If they could see how much you're your power, your might, your endless love, then surely they would. to a Harvest Festival this morning. So whether you're here in person or watching online, we're really glad that you've joined us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the freedom to gather in this place to worship you and to give you thanks and praise for all of your provision. Lord, we just want you to know that we appreciate you and we love you this morning. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your
Now we celebrate harvest every year. I wonder if anyone can tell me why we do it. Come on. Because we should be grateful, brilliant. Any other reason why we celebrate harvest every year? Apart from being grateful, there's more than that. There's much more than that. Come on. Come on, liven up. Participate. What other reasons do we celebrate harvest? Come on. Brilliant. God created it all. Brilliant. And he absolutely is a faithful God. Come on, more participation. Oh, come on, liven up. We're here to praise God and be grateful. Absolutely, he gives us the ability to share with others. Now, we have a scripture. Genesis 28, verse, sorry, Genesis 8, verse 22. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. When someone does something good for us, we should say thank you. It's only good manners after all. So let's continue our worship with some more songs.
his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things oh hero of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great Would you all like to take a seat, please? I wonder, how good is your memory? We're going to have a little test of that memory now because there's a picture here of eight different types of vegetable. What have we got? Pumpkins, onions, sweet corn, potatoes, beans, cabbage, broccoli, carrots. Do you think you can remember what's there because I'm going to show you another photograph in a minute and there's going to be one missing and I want you to tell me what's missing are you ready for this what's missing onions, onions. very good let's try it with fruit cherries grapes pineapple pears apple orange peach banana you got all those? Are you ready? 
It's the peach, well done. Okay, two more questions, maybe a little trickier, maybe not, who will see? What was the first song we sang today? <laughs> Those without an order of service. <laughs> Someone must have been singing. <laughs> what was it, Danny? You've got the order of service. You're looking at up to it. <laughs> Let everyone who has breath praise the Lord. Yes? <laughs> of course it was. What was that verse we had? Genesis 8.22, very while the earth remains, sunshine, sun, summer and winter harvest will not cease. So that's, that's good. So, I mean. Now, I wonder. Important things. We've had the memory game, but important things. Do you remember them? I wonder if anybody uses prompts to help you remember. Might be a knot in your hanky, it might be, well, we don't use hankies now, do we? <laughs> oh, good, Jenny does. Absolutely. Okay, so let's have some, let's have some participation, come on. Liven up, everybody. Jenny has a list. I have a list. Jane has a list. Calendars. What else does anybody use? Post-its? Phone reminder, brilliant. Anyone else? Facebook birthdays, okay, brilliant. <laughs> now, God likes us to remember the important things he's done for us. And God's style of uh, prompting is to reenact, which is why God told his people to celebrate three big festivals every year. God knows that we like parties, which is why every one of the celebrations ends up with a feast when all the men were commanded to go up to Jerusalem. The first feast was Passover, when they celebrate the escape from slavery in Egypt and that's when we celebrate Easter. The second was Pentecost. They celebrate the first harvest and yes, God gave them two harvests. That's when we celebrate the birth of the church. It's when the Holy Spirit came in the upper room. The third one is the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's now when we celebrate our harvest festival. These festivals are still an important part of the church calendar. It's really important to remember what God has done for us because it helps us to know that we can trust him now. So, who can tell me what are the good things that God has done for us? Come on, he's done good things for all of us. Let's have some of them. Shake them out. Salvation, Salvation. brilliant. Say that again. Healing. Give me a voice. <laughs> Come on, there's loads more. Amen. He sets all of us free. Any other good things that God's done for us? Come on, there's loads of them. Love, absolutely. A job, excellent. Brilliant peace. Family and joy. Guidance. Come on, there's loads more. Come on. His word. Life, excellent. Well done, Prospect. Any other things? Nobody's mentioned our church family. And you know, we are incredibly blessed with our church family. 
We're blessed with um, teams inside the church family and in work. We are amazingly blessed with what God has done for us. When God says something is true, it is true. And if God makes a promise, he will keep it. But the million dollar question is, do we believe that God will keep his promises? Do we? I think two of us do. <laughs> if we don't, we're making a really big mistake. It's the sort of mistake that God calls sin. When God's people escaped from e slavery in Egypt, God kept his promise and he rescued them. But when they got to the land that God had promised them, all they saw were the problems. You see, the people who were living there were huge compared to them and they were afraid. Well, 10 of the spies that Moses sent were. They came back and said, the land is just as God told us, but there are giants in the land and we feel like the sort of grasshoppers that they'll trample underfoot. And they scared everyone. No one would listen to Caleb and Joshua, who told Moses, yes, they're big, but our God is bigger. God has given us his word. He will fight for us. Come on, the land is ours. Let's take it. They forgot how God had rescued them from Egypt. They forgot how God had made a path through the Red Sea so they could cross on dry land. They forgot how God had fed them in the desert. They forgot how he'd provided water for them. And they all said, all together, we, we can't, can't do, do it. it. God was both hurt and angry. Did you know you will get what you're believing for? Unbelief has consequences. Did you know both fear and faith attracts? Fear attracts bad things. Faith attracts good things. Job said, the thing I feared most greatly has come upon me. The people of Israel wandered in the wilderness and they lived in tents. The old fashioned word is tabernacles. Until everyone who didn't believe God's word died of old age, they got what they were believing for. They never entered the promised land. Caleb and Joshua got what they were believing for too. They didn't die. They didn't grow old either. They were as strong when they received God's promise as they were when they spied out the promised land 40 years earlier. It was as if time stood still for Caleb and Joshua. Now we're going to sing a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He is higher than the skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. Wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great 
big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. He is higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. Wider than the universe, and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me, and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. 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 I wonder, have you ever forgotten the good things that God has done for you? The Israelites aren't the only ones who sometimes don't believe God's word. When we listen to lies, we hurt our Heavenly Father who loves us. We insult Jesus who gave up everything for us. And we refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to bless us. You will get what you're believing for. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Those who choose one will eat its fruit. The first part of the Feast of Tabernacles was the Day of Atonement. God set apart a whole day for his people to say sorry. So let's join them as we ask God to forgive us for the things that we've done. Let's say sorry to him now. For actions, and if possible, it'd be lovely if the children could come, because it's something we all have to do, whatever our age, it's good to say sorry to God. So, should we get ready to do the actions? Yeah. Right, so we're coming. Right, so we're going to have a time now where we say sorry to God for the wrong things we've done. So the first thing that we need to do is to make fists. Do you know how to make a fist? Like this? Make fists. And while we've got our fists closed, we say, sorry God for the times that we've got angry with other people. Then point, point away from yourself with your index finger. Sorry, God, for the times that we've blamed other people, when we've seen wrong things in others and not recognized that there's also wrong things in us. Never mind what other one's doing. You do it for yourself. Right, now put your hand on your chest. We're sorry that sometimes we keep things selfishly to ourselves and don't give to those who need our help. Now put your hand on your mouth, which I'm not going to do or you won't hear me. We're sorry for the foolish words we've spoken, which have hurt other people. 
Now put your hands on your ears. We're sorry, God, for the times we haven't listened to your promises. When we've listened to other things instead, which stop us believing what you have said. Now hold out one hand with your palm open. Because when we say sorry, God wants to give us something. He wants to give us his forgiveness. And Jesus says, if you're tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So we bring all that we are to Jesus. All our sins, all our failure to love. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us so that we can be forgiven and start a new life in the power of your Holy Spirit. Now take the other hand, take a finger, and draw the cross on your hand to remind you that we are forgiven because Jesus died for us. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing a song that I think you know now, so don't go away. Another thing that we do because we trust God is to talk to him about the things that we need help with. Not only for ourselves, but for others too. These prayers are called prayers of intercession, and that means asking. God told us to ask for the things that we need. Over to you, Jane. Right, in a minute, we're going to church and do some prayers around the church and anybody who wants, particularly the younger ones, are very welcome to follow me. Before I do, I want to say that when we prayed on Friday, God spoke to us about people in church or maybe online who are feeling a lot of disappointment at the moment. People who have pain in their hearts, whether it's a physical pain or from disappointment or whatever. And God reminded us that he wants to bind up the brokenhearted. So as we come in intercession, we bring that to him as well. And if you'd like to seek more prayer for that afterwards, please do find a member of the prayer team to pray with. But we're going to start off our intercessions now at the back of the church, at the font, where we baptize people. Lord God, you've called us to follow you. We remember our baptism and we remember moments in our journey. 
as a road markers on our way to you. Lord, we pray for our journey together. Lead us together in your service. Amen. Now we're going to go to the door. I think we'll briefly open it as well. Lord God, we come and go through this door, but there are many who do not. We believe that your love is for everyone. We pray that you would encourage us, make us strong and bold to be vehicles for that love wherever we go, to show your love and to talk about you wherever we are. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going back to the front of the church. And we're going to go here where God's word is read. Lord God, our world often, seem, world often seems to be filled with darkness. We pray that we will follow the Christ of the scriptures, Jesus who is the light of the world. We pray for our journey together. Lead us in your service. Amen. And a very short journey in this church to the communion table. Lord God, we trust in the grace you give us, a grace we couldn't earn or deserve. And we remember this when we join our brothers and sisters at your table. We think now of those we know and love who need to be fed, who need to be consoled, healed, embraced and forgiven. We think of those who are suffering from disappointment of so many different kinds. Those who have all kinds of pain in their hearts. And we thank you because we know you want to bind up the brokenhearted. We pray for all those we know who are needing God's healing touch today. Lord, we pray for our journey together. Lead us into your service. Amen. And finally, there's going to be a prayer on the screen. This is a prayer that the bishops have asked us to say. I've got it. If this is a prayer that the bishops have asked us to say in these difficult times when so many are finding life hard. So can we say together, please, loving God, you are always with us. And give us all we need to be your church in Suffolk in these challenging times as we respond in loving action to those in great need. Help us, we pray, to give as we have received, abundantly, generously, and joyfully, that our worship and our service may bear witness to your kingdom of unfailing love. In the name of your Son, who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Awesome. 
now have our Bible readings, please. The reading can be found on page 1071, John 7. Jesus goes to the Festival of Tabernacles. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore Jesus told them, My time is not yet here. For you any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I am not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, where is he? On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Help me. Could I have seven volunteers, please? So you're over the right-hand side, over there. Can you stand next to her with the A, please? You've got to hold it up so everyone can see it. It's yours. Oh, no, are you waiting to help? Thank you. Yes, this is good. Great, so the word is harvest. Oh, it's working. Right, so what we're talking about, what is harvest? Well, we're going to use this word to look what it is. So, Margaret, if you could come out of there for a minute, please. And we take the S and the T off. They're going to need to see, so you can't stand in front of them. So harvest, if we hold up those four letters that are left, harvest is celebrating what we have. Good. 
And harvest is particularly about... Now, Jenny, if you could go over to that side, and then, I'm sorry, I don't know the girl, little girl's name. The e Next, Maisie. And Bonner after Maisie, please. And so harvest is particularly about what we eat. It's just... <laughs> you might need to follow this with the camera, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Harvest is about what we eat. Because we want, don't we, to say thank you to God. And we remember that everything we have comes from God. And God made... Now, Margaret, I need you to get in between Maisie and Bonner. And then, then you two are not in this one. So it's just these five. Uh, yeah, that's it. Leave you all there. So God made the whole earth. earth and he's Lord of the whole earth. This reminds us that we need to... Now, if Maisie can come up and stand in here... Maisie, can you come up here? This way. And if you let us... Um, uh, Jenny as well, I need you as well to stand. Uh, mm, well, not unless he has the eye. No. So can you, can you, you come in between these two? H E R H E H E A. <laughs> right, Maisie, you're going to go the other side of Jenny, and then we need That's Margaret at the end. Right. And Margaret in front of. Right. Yeah, well, we 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 need Margaret next to. Um, we've we've got this all mixed up, haven't we? So, <laughs> it's supposed to say we need to hear. But um, I don't think we can spell here. But anyway, we need to hear God's promises. <laughs> we need to remember God's promises and to believe them. Because God is the God who can. Right, now we need number six, then two, then four, and five. Can we manage that? Six, two, four, five. Six is over there, yes. Um, yes, six, two, four, five. Four. And five. God is the God who can save us. Thank you. And because of what God has done, finally, we want to... Now, you need to go and stand next to Gideon between Gideon and Maisie. And then after the A, we need, uh, num yeah, this one, Number yeah, <laughs> shave. We don't need to shave. <laughs> Never work with children or animals, right? <laughs> we need to, to share with people who have not got enough to eat. Give them all a big clap for an amazing job. Thank you. <laughs> so they can all go on that table now. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we say thank you to God for the harvest. <laughs> well, yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> but yes, harvest is about thanking God. It's about giving him praise and celebrating together because it's too easy, isn't it, to take God's good gifts for granted. And too often we notice what we haven't got instead of what we have got. We want things that God hasn't given us instead of enjoying what he has given us. But you know, what he has given us is just amazing. Earlier this year, Mark took some tiny, tiny seeds and planted them in earth. And now we've got beautiful, sweet tomatoes growing in the garden. It's the same with the food we buy in the shops. We're not so aware of the process there. But all the food that which, here which comes from shops, it's because farmers took the seeds, planted them, cared for them, and they grew. 
Of course, we can't rely on every seed we plant growing. It depends on the weather. It depends on the soil. It depends on all sorts of other things, but it on, only ever happens because of this amazing world that God has given us where seeds grow into plants and we get sunshine and rain and there's lots of good things to eat. But God's also given us so much more than just food, hasn't he? We thought earlier about all the wonderful things that God has given us. So, of course, we want to thank and praise him, don't we? Uh, and, yeah, we can do that any time. It's good to thank God before we eat a meal. It's great to say thank you to God when we go to bed for all the good things that happened that day. Now, of course, in a lot of days, there'll be not so good things as well. And, and God wants us to talk to him about those as well. We don't have to pretend that we have no problems. But let's not spend all our time complaining when we've got so many blessings. So we can say thank you to God, yes, any time. But it's really good sometimes to come together and do it. We do like to come together and celebrate, don't we? I mean, that's why we have birthday parties. That's why we get together at Christmas and other special times. When something special happens, we want to say thank you. And that's why we come together at Harvest to say thank you, God, together. Now, Harvest is also... Harvest is the time to say thank you. It's also a time to remember what God's done for us so that we can trust him in the future. We've heard a bit about God's promises this morning and we want to say to God, yes, we trust you. We know that your promises are true. Because looking back at what God's done, that means we know he's a good, loving father so we can trust him for the future. Now, Irene was talking about the Festival of Tabernacles, and an important part of that was living in tents. That's why we've got this tent here this morning. Because um, what the Israelites would do, would they'd all go and live in a shelter or a tent for, for the eight days of the festival. And it was to remember that when they were in the wilderness, they lived in tents all the time. And God kept them safe. They had to trust God for food and everything they needed. But he kept them safe and he brought them into the promised land. He kept all his promises. So what helps us remember? Well, shortly we'll be sharing communion. Jesus said, do this to remember that I died for you. Because he died to bring us back to God. And if, if God would do that for us, if Jesus would do that for us, then we do know, don't we, that we can trust him. What else helps us to remember? Well, the words we read in the Bible, the songs we sing that talk about God's love and what he's done. We give testimony. We tell each other what God's done for us. And sometimes, when life isn't easy, we need to hold on to the things God has done and remember when he, that God is good so that even when things are hard, we know he's there with us. Does anybody have a testimony they'd like to share this morning? No, well, think about it, and, and if there is one, another time, do please share it, because it's really good to hear what God is doing. The third thing that Harvest is about is sharing. At the back of the church, we've got the gifts for fine, the non-perishable food. We've put all the uh, fresh food at the front, but at the back is the non-perishable food for fine. And thank you for everyone who brought in a gift for those in need. But if you didn't, don't worry, because there's a chance next week. And every week, we always have the collecting box for fine at the back. Because there's a need every week. God has given us so much. Yeah, food, that's part of it, but lots of things, other things as well. He blesses us in so many ways. We are loved, we're chosen, we're saved from sin and death. And God says, as you received, you should give. 
He calls us to be a generous people, not just at harvest. Listen to this from Isaiah. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to set the oppressed free? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Yes, it's great to come in worship, to give God thanks and praise and celebrate together what he's done for us. But the other side of it is that we need to go out from here. We need to share God's good news. We need to share God's good gifts with others because that's all part of worship. And the other thing I want to say about harvest is that harvest is about Jesus. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles was the grain harvest for the Israelites, and you've probably seen one of these gathering in the grain harvest. I wonder if anyone recognizes these different grains. Does anyone know what that is? Wheat. Yeah, that one's wheat. Oats. Yeah, mm hmm That might be a bit trickier. You won't have seen that one, I shouldn't think. Rice, yes. Corn, yeah. And barley, yeah. So they celebrated the grain harvest. They all went to Jerusalem to to share in the celebrations. And as we heard from the passage Elizabeth read this morning, Jesus went to this feast. It was a feast that lasted eight days, and they lived in shelters. They were in Jerusalem, yes, but they didn't live in the houses. They lived in the shelters. And on the last day, on the eighth day of tabernacles, was what they called the water libation ceremony. And we're going to try this now. <laughs> what they did was they had a procession. They'd been collecting water every day from the wells, and they came and poured it on the altar. But don't worry, we're not going to pour it on the communion table. Uh, we have um, a vessel specially here to receive the water. And I'd like, I need three people to come and get the jugs of water at the back and come and pour it into here. We need to get the jugs from the kitchen. Yes. Well, they can pour it in, can't they? So they'd get the jugs, they'd get the water from the wells and they'd bring it in procession and they would pour it over the altar or in this case into the container. Thank you. And part of the reason that they did this was to ask for God's blessing on next year's crop by sending rain. Water is really important, isn't it? Without water there is nothing to drink, nothing to eat. But there was also another reason. Every time they collected water, they would say a verse from Isaiah, and they would say this verse. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. This wasn't only about water for the crops. This was the blessing they were expecting when the Messiah came, and especially the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. The water represented the Holy Spirit. Another picture we had at prayers on Friday was a reminder of a picture we'd had before when we 
God gave us this picture of water flowing down from the table at the top and out through the church and through the door as God sends us out with his word, taking his blessing and the blessing of his spirit out to others. And this was what they were celebrating. Now, when Isaiah talks about the wells of salvation, the word he used for salvation was a Hebrew word, obviously, and it was this word. And every time salvation is mentioned in the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, this is the word they used, Yeshua, salvation. Who can tell me what Jesus' name is in Hebrew? Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua. Do you remember when Jesus was born, the angel said to Joseph, you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus is salvation. He is our savior. So when Jesus was there at the Feast of the Tabernacles, they were pouring out the water and Jesus said... So he reminded everyone of that verse from Isaiah and he said, this is me. I am the one who gives you the Holy Spirit, the living water that you need. So not only does God give us the amazing harvest that we need, he gives us the even more amazing gift of his Holy Spirit to live within us when we say yes, to Jesus and we have God's life his spirit in us now that's really something to be thankful for isn't it so harvest it's about thanking God and celebrating it's about remembering that we can trust him it's about sharing what we have with others and it's all about Jesus so I want to finish this part of the service with, with two psalms that they used at the Feast of Tabernacles, but I've got them in easy-to-say versions today. So first I want us to say together Psalm 117, which is a short one. So shall we say together, Praise God, everybody. Applaud God, all people. His love has taken over our lives. God's faithful ways are eternal. Hallelujah. It says applause, so let's give God applause. Right, you're going to help me with this one, aren't you? <laughs> We're going to sing a version of Psalm 67, which was a harvest psalm. Uh, does it, do people know the tune to London's Burning? Good. Well, we're going to sing it to that. We haven't got any music, so you're going to have to sing nice and loud. Are you ready? God has blessed us, God has blessed us, bless the whole earth, bless the whole earth, sing praise, sing praise, love of God's love, love of God's love, God will guide us, God will guide us, put all things right, put all things right, It's so important what we're doing today. And not only what we're doing today, but the fact of involving each other and, and getting everyone to take part is really, really important. 
You know, one of the things that happened um, on the, in this festival is that the, the children, the whole family, was a part of this. A and it was so important because in it, the children were asked, well, why do we do these things? What is, what's, why do we keep on? And the, the father or mum would say, well, let me tell you, this is what's happening, okay? And, and, and I cannot stress enough the importance of this. It, there's a very, very sad verse in, in Scripture, one of the very sad verses in Scripture, and, and it's, it's this one. In, it's in um, the book of Judges, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, and it says that all that generation that had seen God's mighty power in, 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 in um, coming into the promised land had passed, and, the, and, and the, the generation that followed didn't know God and what he had done. It ain't happening in my watch. We are blessed. God has revealed himself to you and me. And the blessing is not to keep. Because if you keep it, it gets distorted. It gets... It just... It's a blessing. When you receive a blessing and you share it, it becomes more of a blessing. Okay? And so... Jesus, knowing that what was going to happen, he said that we should take the bread and the wine, and each time we have a meal, that we should remember what he'd done. So we're taking the words from 1 Corinthians 11. And it says, Paul, the Apostle Paul says, For I received... From the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and broke it. And it, said, and, he, and it said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He is asking us to do this in remembrance of me. You know, the grace that we say before meals is in a sense taking that part and saying, yes, I recognize. I understand that mom or dad or whoever's prepared the meal and we thank them for it, but we thank you, Lord, that you provided. And we thank you, Lord, that you've not only provided for me in my food, but you provided for me also in the person of Jesus. He, he, his, his body was taken to the cross and in a sense, in a sense, broken for us. And we do this in remembrance when we break the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So now, knowing what he's done, you at home as well, let's take the bread and eat it in remembrance to what, what he has done. You see, he was broken. He shed his blood for us and died on the cross. But it wasn't not only that. We remember that, and we do this by drinking the wine, we remember that, that yes, he shed his blood, but he also conquered death, sin, and the devil. And so he said, it's finished. So we drink the cup. Remember that God, what he's done, is final and absolute. He is triumphant. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. Shall we say and give thanks to God for all he's given us? And you that are probably feeling broken and crushed, remember that it was one that was beaten, that was rejected, that was crushed for your, for you. And he knows what it is. God wants you to know that he um, has taken all the difficulties, all the, y your illnesses, all that is um, depriving you what, of what God has for you. He has taken that and, and, and nailed it to the cross. And his word says that by his stripes we are healed. So in the name of Jesus, I say to you, Whatever is afflicting you, whatever you feel crushed by, in the name of Jesus, I break that and say it's no longer. And I, put, and I proclaim in the name of Jesus, healing and wholeness, both um, in your minds, in your bodies, and in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, may you know his uh, saving power. Amen. Do after communion, but we're going to do some actions with it, which I hope the children will be able to join in as well. Um, perhaps you can model them, because Irene, because I'll have one hand. Oh. So, so when we say. We're going to say our father, the first line, but we're going to point one hand, our Father in heaven. And we need reminding how holy God is, so we say that his name is holy, and as we do so, we're going to put the other hand up, so it's hallowed be your name. And we ask God to make things better on earth, so we say, your kingdom come, so we bring them, our hands down, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, and we ask him for the good things we need. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, let's cleanse our hands, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Let's wipe the front of our hands this time. We ask for protection and safety. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, so the strong arm of God keeps us safe. And the glory, of, sorry, missed out a line. We finish with a joyful shout of praise for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, haven't we got an awful lot to thank God for? You know, Danny has prayed for us all. He's really opened up communion, which is amazing. But we have a choice. God's holding out his hand. It's like a present. If you're given a present, you can say, wow, isn't that lovely? Or you can unwrap it and enjoy the gift that's inside. And what I would love to know is that every single one of us have unwrapped that present, however beautiful it looks on the outside, and are going to enjoy the blessings that God's given us. But we have a choice. We had a scripture earlier, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What will you choose? Will you choose to unwrap that present? Will you choose to enjoy all of the blessings that God has given? Or will you leave that present wrapped up? 
We can choose. We can participate or we can spectate. I would love every single one of us to be participators and that's my prayer. That every one, that he is every single one of our services at All Saints will not be a spectator but will be a participator and that's a huge difference but the choice is ours we can watch on the outside or we can enjoy every blessing God has for us now we have a closing song you have the next oh sorry <laughs> I'm too keen <laughs> So starting in the order things are happening, the first thing is after this service, please will those who can help to put the tables to the side and the chairs in order ready for toddlers on Tuesday. We've forgotten to do this for a couple of weeks. It's been a bit of a scramble on Tuesday mornings. Uh, yeah, that comes afterwards. <laughs> so tables are straight after the service. This evening, as Mark rightly says, there is a Spanish service here. Next uh, Saturday, there is the Deanery Conference, which um, Danny and I will be going to to share all the good things that are happening at All Saints, and we'd love people to come and stand with us as we do this. And I mean, you do get bacon butties, so <laughs> see us if you'd like to register and um, come along to that. Uh, one a bit further along in time, on the 30th of October, we've got another opportunity to celebrate together. Uh, it's our church anniversary. Well, the 1st of November is really the anniversary, All Saints Day. But um, we're celebrating on the 30th of October. And um, Paul, Pastor Harold Afflew is going to come and speak to us at the 10.30 service. And then at the end of the service, we're going to be sharing lunch together. And we're hoping that you'll be able if you come from another country, that you'll be able to bring a dish from that country. If you don't, if you come from this country, then maybe but get creative from something from a different area of this country or something that you, a family dish that you like to make, something that we can all bring and celebrate together. Is that all the notices? It isn't. Hmm? Oh, the working day, yeah. Yes. Uh, before the working day, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And this is my testimony. Thank you so much for the people that came yesterday yes. to help. You know, it was such a blessing that I could be doing the things that I could do, but know that there's my brothers and sisters were taking care of other things. It just filled my heart with joy. Thank you, thank you so much for what you did yesterday and what you always do. Thank you for, for, for um, helping out. And, and, and there's going to be another opportunity on the... It's what's 15th the, of October. 15th of October, Saturday the 15th of October. And if you want, bring your packed lunch and we'll have it together here at the end. Um, um, and, um, yeah. Um, there's also... Uh, another thing, uh, could you come, Georgina, please? Yes. Georgina is going to go and have some work experience up north, <laughs> in the foreign lands up north. No, the beautiful lands up north. Come on, come on, Georgina. And Georgina is a very quiet person at least here, um, but she takes care of us so, so much, and we've been so, so blessed with her, and we, I recognize her, the, the blessing she has been, and the blessing she will be wherever she goes, because Jesus is with her. And she's coming back here. And she's coming back here, yes. <laughs> so, Lord Jesus, bless Georgina. Lord, bless her in all that you have her, Lord, for her, Lord Jesus. Lord, let nothing stand between what you have for her and, Lord, um, all those blessings, all the good things, Lord. Lord, we just break uh, from her, Lord, everything that would uh, hold her back, Lord Jesus. And we bless her and we send her, Lord, to learn, to, um, to grow, Lord, to, blessing, to, to be a blessing to those she meets over there, Lord. 
and uh, Lord, we just thank you for her, and we bless her, Lord, as she goes and, uh, and learns and uh, grows in you, Lord Jesus. May she be a blessing to the fellowship and church where she uh, goes to be, Lord, uh, while she's there, and Lord, thank you for her life. Amen. 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 Shall you do the general blessing before the last yes. song? Yes, and the general blessing also to <laughs> Jane. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Okay, 15 again, eh? <laughs> okay, so the blessing of God Almighty. Wow. The blessing of God Almighty be with us all, now and forever. Just take the weight. Just take the weight. God decided to bless us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for going with us from here, wherever we go. Bless those at home. Bless those who are going through difficult times. We think of Angela and Jeff, particularly, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for each one of the people that a part of all saints now and for those that are to come Lord Jesus Lord thank you and the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you and go with you as you go out from here Amen Amen Thank you. 